everyone. So um, the last time um, my video, I showed you where I was with the PK. Um, this is the PK so far. If you remember, we got as far as um, turning the um, hemmed piece over. It's now got a fabric on the back and on the front, quilted um, together with wadding inside. Um, the only thing left to do was to seal up the end, which um, I started to do already. Um, there's a hole left here, so I'll just quickly show you what I was doing. Basically, what we need to do is make this stitch uh, as invisible as possible. So the idea is you take the needle and you put it... I've, I've ironed a fold into this, so I know where I'm going exactly. Um, and I take the needle along the edge, if you can see, along the edge of the fabric on one side and pull a stitch through and then on the opposite side literally opposite where that one comes out you go in and run it along the edge of that side and out again it, they don't need to be terribly um, big stitches it's called a ladder stitch because obviously it goes across in sort of um, horizontal lines. If you were to leave this open, you would see there were horizontal lines of thread going from one side to the other. Um, so where that one's come out again, I'm going to go literally right across here, go in with the needle, run it along just a few millimetres and come back out. And then do that. So just the last couple of stitches I want to show you how that was done and basically you end up with a, a seam that is invisible really. It's It's got to be no more visible than it would be if I had actually carried on stitching all the way around with the sewing machine and, and turned it across so it looks exactly the same as the rest of that seam. So that's the end of that one now. Just those last couple of stitches to do. So I'll just finish that off and then show you what we do next. The easiest way to get rid of a thread in something like this is literally send it straight down inside the fabric, bring the needle out where, where you can and then just snip off the excess. If you pull a little bit of tension on it, that thread, when you snip it quite close to the material then disappears back inside. That won't come undone. So, so the next thing to do is to actually um, do the quilting um, stitches all over this. What I'm going to do, um, um, at first I, I don't want to quilt all over my appliques, so what I'm going to do is what they call echo stitching, quilting around the edge of the scalloped edge of these patterns. So about maybe three or four millimetres away from the edge of this scalloped edge here, I'm going to run the sewing machine along that edge all the way around on all three designs and that will give me uh, a border um, then I'll do the rest of the uh, quilting across the whole piece and then once I've done that I can see whether I want to um, do some kind of random quilting in the centre of these panels or if I want to do um, like a, an echo quilting around the inside edge as well because each of these designs is quite sort of precise and specific. If I cover that up with quilting it might detract from the design itself so especially with um, a couple of them being quite uh, you know they're not as um, contrasting as say the brown one is you know that's obviously going to stand out whatever I do but the other ones are a little bit more subtle and I don't want to hide them with the stitching that I do. So anyway the next stage is just to get my sewing machine ready for that. Um, at the moment I've got the walking foot on, so I just need to 
take that off. It's just a, a quick, quick process just to take that off. Now I'm going to be doing a free hand, a free motion embroidery and quilting. So I get the foot out for that. And this foot, um, the very very similar um, on most machines. Essentially, they have um, an area around here where the needle goes through, and a spring, and this part here which sits over the top of the um, foot um, lever, um, and basically it's um, it lifts the foot of the of the embroidery foot as it does each stitch which allows you to then move um, your embroidery around because obviously this um, this process you will um, lift your feed sorry lower the feed dogs um, in order to do the quilting stitching so um, you need to be able to move the work around easily so just get that in there so that's tight now now my feed dog's lower at the back of the machine, so just do that. Very stiff button, and away we go. Yeah. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to work around the designs first, and then I'll fill in with my um, random um, quilting stitches afterwards. So another thing you can do, um, which I think I will, is um, if you ever find these are really useful. It's great for doing um, quilting and they are a pair of white rubber gloves. They're especially for quilting and put them on. It gives you great grip on the fabric um, rather than having to actually hold it by the sides. You can just literally hold it, press over the top of this and it will move the, the fabric around really well. Great grip so I'll use these. Keep an eye on my um, lower. Right then, so now we can see that's the three of those um, quilted. You can see quite well on the back actually um, how that looks. Um, so now I'm going to just go randomly around. Um, there's lots of different fill stitches you can do for um, for quilting. Um, you can do a sort of um, sort of this random kind of backwards and forwards effect where the idea is that you don't overlap the stitches from um, previous lines or there's somewhere you actually do little loops um, and literally going kind of looping around all over the place and you can go either way you can do little hearts there's lots of different stitches if you're interested there's lots of information available online that you can have a look and get some inspiration for different quilting stitches and you can go to town with it um, Basically, I'm just going to do um, a random stitch where I'm going to just allow my threads to uh, do a little loop occasionally um, and just fill up the area with that. And uh, I'm going to keep it um, not too small, not too tight. I do want the, the mat to be fairly flat, but I also want it to have some loft to it, some obvious kind of quilting effect to it. And if you do the stitches really close together, the design really close, um, it will be it will tend to flatten the piece completely and also um it then kind of puts an expectation on me to actually do my design on here on these designs really tight as well and for instance i might want to fill in the background of between these designs with that kind of stitch but i probably don't want to stitch over the top of the actual applique pieces themselves um because I think that would be too much. So um, I'm probably going to try and leave those blank. And so because some of them have some fairly large areas, say like here, where there's quite a large area, if that's not quilted at all and everything else is tightly, really, really tightly quilted, that will stand out a lot. So um, I'll go mediocre with it and kind of just keep it to a medium um, quilting. And also it means it's quicker to do. Anyway, so let's see how we go with it. And 
and I'll show you when this is done. There's no point what, uh, you watching me as I do this. Um, I'll just fast forward through this. There we go. I wasn't sure I'd reach the end there, but I came back round to the where I started, so I thought I must have done. Um, so that's it. Um, as you can see, the sort of um, quilting that I've done, this kind of um, random, if it's really small, um, and if it hasn't, because I've got these little loops here and there every so often, as that has there. Um, if it's random, and quite small they call it vermicelli but because it's got the loops on it can't be called that so I don't know what to call it but it's a random pattern and it makes it easier to do if you're wanting to do a particular design what you can do is draw it out on the fabric first with chalk and uh, and then you can follow that and it will wipe off quite well if you use a pale coloured chalk or something that's not too different from the actual fabric that you can wipe it away without it staining the fabric that's quite good so anyway the only thing left to do now you can see it's flattened it down quite a lot from what it was um, so the only thing left to do now is to actually do the quilting on the um, patches themselves on the appliques what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this pattern in the spaces around the actual design um, inside the design so that'll be a start and then I'll see what I'm going to do after that. Okay. So there we go, that's one of the two designs done. Quite like the slight quilting effect still left in there. Hi, okay. Um, I was filming and then it decided to stop filming, so I have um, not realised that. And I've now completed the whole thing, but quickly just show you the rest of these patches that I've done. Um, so I've gone over and filled in all of these areas um, on all three patches now. I also went back and filled in the actual little windows and all the small areas that. Um, that complete all the pictures just to sort of help make all of these designs really stick out and spring out um, and yeah. that's now finished so, so um, this is the finished um, table runner now um, I'm really happy with it and I hope you all uh, take something from this and would give it a go um, I think you'll find it's um, a really nice way of doing something a bit different with quilting and patchwork and the scalloped edge is really really easy it's not not difficult at all and I hope you were given some advice and you know made to feel that like you could do that too um, it's nothing to be daunted by and um, people don't tend to sort of show you how to do that technique and it was really easy to do and um, if anyone's made a bag or any kind of uh, anything where you've turned it in on itself even a cuddly toy you can do this so you know it's easy to do um so yeah there we go um i hope you enjoyed that and uh, thank you very much for watching and um i hope you all have a have a go at something similar in the future um so check out my next video i'm not sure what it's going to be yet but we'll see okay thanks very much for watching bye